And again, I just want to thank all of you for taking the time to come out tonight. Please do not kill the messenger. I merely want to provide you with information on where we are. I received a lot of emails from some of you on all of the crazy amendments that were out there. So I wanted you to know where we were at with some of those amendments. So we've got the document that's being passed out has the amendments that have passed, those that have failed, those that we've not taken action on, and as you know, we still don't have a concealed carry gun law. So we'll just we're gonna talk through some of these and what does it mean and where are we at and where do we go from here. Is everybody in the room a gun enthusiast or do we have some on the opposite side? Are there anti are there any anti gun advocates in the room today? Anti gun? Anti concealed carry? <laughs> Actually, I said we were, I'm not a post okay, so I never have that. I did vote against it. I said that if there was a reasonable bill, I would vote for it. And I did talk to uh, Representative Phelps with the past bill, what my concerns are. Those were addressed in this bill, but there's still one issue in this bill, and he's got to take another look at it because it was something that was recently added. It was not in last year's bill, and it deals with the penalty for not disclosing. If you're a law-abiding citizen and you conceal carry and you're pulled over, well, you can be, um, was it, there's two steps of penalties in there. I believe the first step is a uh, fine, and the second one is six months in uh, imprisonment, plus it's a gun charge. I don't think anyone in here deserves that. So he was not aware that that language could negatively affect law abiding citizens, and he did say he would take a look at it. So, and I want to thank Mike for providing me with that information, because actually that got past me as well. Uh, we'll start with those amendments that have been adopted. They're on the very first page. And some of them, you know, some of them make sense. Okay, you can't carry a gun in the school. I, I think that's a common sense of, you know, well, we all know that. But I think we got carried away. There were like 57 amendments and counting because it looks like they're continually to add more and more and more. It's the concept of throw it up against the wall and see what sticks. I'm not sure what that final bill is going to look like, but... Um, you're sorry, what are you Two was yeah. amended to what? What? The Phelps bill, not that seven? Uh, no, we're going to talk about how that works. These bills actually have not... They passed second reading, meaning that they're not official. Okay? These are what we call test votes to see... You know, again, we're going to throw it against the wall and see what sticks. And what's, what's your stance on an in-school carrier? No, nobody would want you to carry a gun in the school. Why, why I do. In the school? Yes, I would. Well, I would want teachers to carry yeah. 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 oh, I'm sorry, sir. You have Excuse me. 36 years as a teacher, what else is going to prevent that, those uh, shootings in school? We have states we where concealed carry is no legal, and we have allowed. shootings in what schools. What is that doing? But we, in states where concealed carry is legal, we still have shootings in school. I don't think there is any no, no, law that is going to... Excuse me. That's because... Well, yes, no. we're happening. You didn't hear my comment. Okay. Again, don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, in Israel, yes. they had attacks on their schools. Their children were killed. Their teachers are armed. They do not have any school shootings. Right, but I believe in uh, Representative Phelps' bill, you can't carry a gun in school either. That's in his bill as well. And that is the bill that you ultimately want to see pass. Is that our children are going to be murdered? I don't want to see I'm that. sorry, I appreciate your stance. I mean, I, I, I understand that you don't want private citizens carrying guns in the school, but I don't think that what you're proposing or what's being proposed is that the school districts themselves could not adopt something for teachers at some point in time. Or security or guards. To be right. able to carry. They don't want they don't want parents coming into the school pissed off right. because their child got an F lock and loading. I mean I think we do I don't know what's going on. Right, and, and that, that's more to the point. Here in this area, our police officers are armed and they are in the schools. So obviously that would not apply to police officers. Yes, sir. You know, I'm reading all of this stuff that was approved by politicians. What's uh, stopping the criminals from doing this? Sir, we're going to go through these. I haven't, I'm here. You shoot the, the messenger. I'm providing you with information. Okay. Well, 
<laughs> in this case, I just want to provide you with what, what actually has been going on. Yes, Jack? In any area where you're prohibiting the carrying of guns, if a private citizen is in shot in those areas, is the state responsible for making restitutions because they prohibited us carrying there? No, but so as I said, we're on Amendment 57 and counting. None of this really means anything until it's actually passed. But these are the things that are being proposed, and that, that's what I want you to know. But that's the problem. Well, well, what's being proposed? What's being thrown out there? Again, that's let's, why we want to know your stance. All right, let's throw it up against the wall. Let's see what sticks. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I mean, some of these, you know, school and all that. But the thing that really drives home though is adjacent to near the parking lot. And that was debated for hours. It was debated for hours. And uh, Representative Phelps, I felt, had a very good argument on that. I myself didn't understand why the parking lots were needed. I mean, first they said don't carry it in the church. Then you couldn't do the church parking lot. I, I, it's to the point to where you can't carry it anywhere except in your house. And, and that, that's why a lot of the motions started failing because they really were going to the extreme. It's like, come on, for real. You know, this is ridiculous. We understand that there are a lot of individuals. A lot of the, if you look at where the representatives reside that came out with some of the more, I don't want to say black, but a little more uh, extreme uh, legislation, but they're from Chicago. And the mayor of Chicago is really driving an anti concealed <laughs> carry campaign right now. No. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so,
answers your question about guns, not policy, not the amendment, not the bill, but what, what about the gun play? Sometimes I get the sense, not just you, but a lot of people who are engaged in this quote unquote conversation don't have a knowledge base about firearms. And I think so what happens to you is you and give you my class, they has class and tell there's a lot of knowledge. And I appreciate that. And we, some of you guys may know Todd better than I, to me not. He is probably uh, the biggest advocate that there possibly could ever be for um, guns and concealed carry. And he has made it his life's mission to sit down with each and every single one of us. I mean, he is just so awesome. So, I mean, the most ridiculous questions that you can come up with, he always has an answer. You know, because I personally was not understanding the magazine. I thought that was a pretty, I'm like, okay, well, that, that makes sense. Why do you need that many rounds of ammunition? But then after he got through explaining it, it made sense to me. Right. So I'm not sure how Brandon is going to feel. They did a hybrid of that bill where they're going to grandfather in individuals who currently have the, um, the semi-automatic, so they will still be able to there won't be any new ones allowed. So I'm not sure. I'm waiting to hear Brandon's argument on that. I know Todd is totally against it. The gentleman in the hat. Uh, my name is Joel Siegel. I re represent the North Shore North Suburban Use for uh, Preservation of Firearms Ownership. And our organization has a number of concerns. Number one, Lisa Madigan uh, may appeal this ruling and may obfuscate the concealed carry bill. Uh, number two, we will not permit the disarming of the Jewish people in Illinois. Uh, we do not want any semi-auto or assault weapon uh, ban, nor do we want a magazine ban, because a magazine ban is a de facto uh, assault weapon or semi-auto ban, because most uh, semi-autos are made with a certain capacity magazine. And therefore, by banning the magazines, you are de facto banning the firearm. Uh, we consider these bans to be anti-Semitic. We will not permit it. And uh, we are organized to prevent this. So I hope you will convey uh, our sentiments to the members of Chicago, especially the members of the state legislature, who are, I consider, uh, promoting anti-Semitic legislation. Thank you. And in response to that, one of the um, arguments that I heard, and this is actually quite common down there, is that guns are constitutional, ammunition is not. Uh, just want to throw that out there. I know, I know. <laughs> so I guess a car is constitutional, but gas is not. Too. children uh, in our schools. Uh, I know Waukegan has taken uh, many measures to uh, protect our schools. We have the front doors locked, but as you know, and has been stated, they are gun free zones. I, I think instead of uh, the discussion about what we're going to do about banning this or that, I would really like to open up a dialogue and have uh, further dialogue with you and, and other local and, and our federal uh, uh, politicians as well, our U.S. politicians as to what we can really do to uh, limit those uh, people from obtaining guns and, and that don't really or aren't qualified to handle them. I think that's where we need to focus. We need to focus on what we can do rather than trying to legislate uh, laws for the entire country, which of which 99% are law-abiding citizens. And I think that's what we all would really like to see. Let's fix this problem because nobody wants that to happen. In, in any of our communities, and I, it just tears me up. I, I, the discipline just tears me up to, to think that somebody would come to our schools and do that. Uh, it, it just, uh, I, I wouldn't be able to take it. You know, so please, uh, let's, let's focus our attention on what we can do to be proactive to prevent these types of things from happening. Get down to the real issues, mental health issues, try to keep, and we need to talk to each other, we need to report doesn't mean narking on your neighbors, but if you see something that's not right, tell someone. Yeah, or if, your name, if you know your neighbor has a pension, 
he yeah. probably should not have a gun. You know, because the last thing we want is for a female or a child to I have two questions. I'm reading through all this stuff on here. One, can you explain, when it says adjacent property, does that mean no. if I live next to a school, an amusement park, or a restaurant, yeah. or a bar, that's what I can't have. Yeah, that's basically, well, you can't carry it outside your house. Well, that's, <laughs> that, that, that's, I thought it was that's the second part of it. Where, I mean, I'm looking through all these where it's not going to be allowed, adjacent property, park, adjacent property. Where that even it? included tailgating at you know the local yeah. high school. Where is it going to be allowed? I mean, I can't find no. anywhere. No. You're home. That's the way I read them. I, I don't know about you. I'm sorry, sir. You said females or children. What about men? Oh, that's true. I'm sorry. I did not mean to And, <laughs> and there's the more crime outside of your home on the streets than there is inside your home. I so I can't protect myself outside of my home because what you're saying is I can't carry a gun outside of my home. I didn't say that. But that's what you're inferring. No, that, that's what all of this is inferring. And this is what we're trying to do. We are, as Matt um, said, you know, we're basically looking for some, you know, a really good solution. And I know Representative Spell, he's taking into consideration a lot of this that really doesn't make sense. And he's working with, he really is working hard with a lot of the Chicago Democrats to try to come up with a good compromise because their uh, concern is mostly gangs. How do we keep the guns out of the hand of the gang? Not, yeah. not, not with this. No, I, I know, not with this. But I said, no, I'm talking about what uh, Representative Phelps is to, to be fair, they've had a chance for compromise. How many years has this been going on? And we've been told, F you. It's not happening. The time that compromise is over. The ball's in our court. They're, they're on a time crunch. I'm Jackie. Donna, to your credit, so we got to fix the problem. That we, have. we have a lot of laws on the books that would fix the problem. And in her handout here, HH number 53, only three out of 102 counties reported judicially educated. When the court said you're, you, you're mentally ill, and should you carry a gun? Only three out of 102 counties reported that to Illinois State Police. And then they're required to do it. How are you ever going to stop the mentally ill and that people from not getting a gun if the law is there, but the law, you know, the police are not doing it? I get it. We won't do what we know we need to do. We need to enforce what we have. Absolutely. And let honest people make the decisions. Thank you. 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 Thank if I may, one thing I noticed, I follow the Wisconsin Concealed Carry Service as well. There seems to be an inference that because we have gang members and criminals out there with guns, that somehow gang members and criminals are going to apply concealed carry permits and then be carrying guns. <laughs> they are. <laughs> they are. <laughs> they are. <laughs> I mean, and the people that are doing killing are kids of innocent men, women, girls, boys. The gang bangers. They, 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 don't have, they don't have gun cards. They're not going to go through CCW, and 99 times out of 100, they can't pass the background check. So, personally, it infuriates me as a law-abiding citizen, and someone who's been involved in just sports shooting as recently, you know, in the last couple of years, gotten more about the political aspect of it. It infuriates me to be acquainted to some gang member, because I don't exercise my constitutional right legally. A lot of these lawsuits aren't meant... They're not aimed at the responsible gun carrier, just yes. so that you know that. And that is not the intent. But they're, I think they're going by the wrong way, sir. And then I'll get to With regard to the mental health issue, um, I can understand that that would be a, uh, a problem, but the only thing that I would be afraid of with that problem is that once you had a set of parameters, is that parameter going to grow yeah. and grow? And they'll be, they'll be using that to then take away people's rights to carry. So if you have PS, PTSD, is there a certain amount of time that you can't carry? No, that, I don't, that would not qualify, and it would have to be, you know, just well, because you have a mental when? health condition doesn't mean that you're excluded. Those are, you know, if your doctor certifies that you are a threat to yourself and others, as individuals who are schizophrenic, schizophrenic maybe, that's more who that particular legislation is um, aimed at. And I will agree with you, the amendment is broad, and it does need to be tightened. Well, because there are we, some there's going to need to be some kind of type, I mean... The only thing I'm afraid of is that the longer that would go, the broader it would become. Because you know how politics works. 
We'll get this much, and it's just going to grow and grow and grow until we don't have any rights again, and we'll be doing this all over again. Yes, sir. I appreciate you, you know, you coming here and everybody being very uh, polite and respectful. Uh, again, don't shoot the messenger, but you said something earlier, and you said it a few times, and it's got my it's got my skin crawling. These do matter. Okay. They sure. matter. They really do because these are the these are the talking points that representatives are going to go back to the House downstate, and they're either going to be able to speak intelligently on these. Or they're not. Um, and, and I agree, like he said, you know, there's a lot of people here with a lot of gun knowledge and a lot of experience um, and, and a lot of goodwill and, and great effort into in maintaining uh, our Second Amendment and our right to conceal and carry. Um, I would ask that uh, Ford does have a great concealed carry law and to take something that's already worked somewhere else and apply it somewhere else is, is a better start than creating something from a new and creating more laws when there's over 20,000 laws that are already on the books. Creating more laws is really not going to make anyone outside safe by disarming law-abiding citizens and telling them where they can't carry it because really you can carry it inside your house and your bathroom and your garage um, and that's about it. Yeah, my concern is, you know, the criminals are not abiding by this and I think everybody knows this. I mean, there are statistics floating around all over the internet about reducing, you know, reducing the gun, it reduces violent crime in, in countries and in cities around the world when you have are citizens who are responsible, law-abiding, like you have here in America. You've got over 90 million gun owners, and you've got, like, what, one incident in the year where one law-abiding citizen took their gun and, created, and had a mass shooting. Everybody else should not have had that gun. You've got mental health issues that, that, he's, that, that the gentleman over there was talking about, um, where that becomes a slippery slope, and you start expanding that out. That, those are serious issues, because I know I work in healthcare, and I can tell you that there are doctors out there that are anti-gun, and if they think you've got PTSD, they're like, you know what? I don't think you should have a gun. And you've got one signature. One. And it should be, if you're, if you're going to include something like that, it needs to be comprehensive. It needs to be very strict if you're going to include that at all. You know, almost like a court system has to rule, you know, that you are mentally incompetent. The jury of your peers, you know, it needs to be something other than just a physician signature because physicians are biased just like we are. You know, they're no different. They're human and they're fallible, you know. And it, it disappoints me tonight to see that we're the only ones that are here. I, I appreciate, you know, the pro, the pro Second Amendment, the pro carry, but the constituents that are that are that are that are opposed to it, they need to hear some of these arguments. They don't need to read statistics, but they need to be told to research. Don't believe what we all have to say. Don't believe it because if you believe what we have to say and take it as gospel, you're no different than those who believe what the left and the progressives have to say about the issues. You have to do your part. You have to research. You have to educate yourselves. If you don't educate yourselves, you're just going to fall lock, step, and line. you got the next person to play the tune as well. There's not going to work. We need, we need representatives to go down state and represent the people and say, this is what my people have said, this is what I've researched, this is what I found out, and this is what I stand for for my people that I'm elected to represent. And I know that you'll do that. Yeah, uh, you were asking about solutions. Uh, as a former teacher, retired teacher, uh, may I suggest some of the following that may reduce the violence of the criminals using firearms? Uh, straw purchases. Uh, unique, strict straw purchase laws with no plea bargaining. That can be enacted. Uh, void violations. Uh, you can en enact a FOIA violations with no plea bargain or lack of FOIA. Okay. You need to fund the FOIA system so that there's not a six-month delay between the application and the issuance. <coughs> it's it's it right now it's supposed to be 30 days. Right yeah. There's yeah. Yeah. one yeah. violation. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. I'm going to finish. Uh, yeah, because the FOIA card, we're, I believe, one of three states that issues FOIA card. Ourselves, Massachusetts, and New Jersey, I believe, are the only three states that go through a comprehensive state background check, which is fine. I think we agree with that. But you need to fund it and you need to back it. And so far, the state has not done it. The governor has obfuscated that, has cut funding for this program. Uh, other things, if you want to get rid of gangs, you've got to look at them as criminal conspiracies and deal with them the way the government dealt with the mafia and the Caponier gangsters. 
You go after their tax base. You go after uh, seizing of uh, their assets. You enact criminal conspiracy laws that will do this. You hit them in the pocketbook. Uh, the last thing, any woman who uh, goes for and is issued by a court order of protection should have the right to have a concealed firearm for her protection. So you need to back up. You need to back up. Uh, Does she have a streamlined? How, streamlined? Yeah, there are states that streamline order of protection with concealed carry, or that automatically grant concealed carry with training when a order of protection is issued. I would, I would like to add to that. Thank you. Yes, sir. I would like to add to that. Mm -hmm. Illinois currently has waiting periods for firearms. In addition to that, you may want to also have, if a, if a person is issued an order of protection against someone else, that they, upon being issued a letter from a local police official, that have that wait. There is already a letter in place. It's called a Wattenberg letter. If, so, if a law enforcement individual is purchasing a firearm, they can bring in a Lockenberg letter, and that they can therefore wait the waiting period for that firearm. You may want to have that extended <coughs> to somebody who's had an order of protection issued for them against another individual. There are many people that are always killed because of what you're Yes. Still in there? Come on in. You know, <clears throat> you cannot legislate personal safety. You cannot legislate common sense. 